A sperm propels itself by means of a long tail, a flagellum, which lashes vigorously from side to side. This extraordinary activity has but a single purpose, to deliver the genetic material in the sperm's head quickly and precisely to the woman's egg. On the tip of the sperm's head is a layer of enzymes and enzyme inhibitors. The inhibitors preserve the enzymes, which will be needed later to penetrate the surface of the egg. This is how the sperm's head looks without its enzyme cap. The material of the head itself is loaded with the actual genetic information which will be transmitted to the egg. These are the strands of DNA which will be transformed into chromosomes. This is one of the many fuel packets arranged along the midpiece of the sperm. The fuel consists of sugars, which is converted into energy for the sperm's locomotion. The propulsion system of the sperm's tail is made up of a bundle of cords or filaments. The filaments are covered with thousands of tiny hooks. As the hooks intermesh, the whole bundle begins to bend, and the tails of the sperm begin to whip around like this. It is a primitive, but highly efficient system of propulsion. The system does not function perfectly every time. average, up to 20% of a normal man's sperm are deformed or imperfect in some way. Perhaps one reason why a man produces so very many sperm is that so very many things can go wrong with the sperm themselves. They may have two tails, like this one. Some even have three tails. Another common deformity, the heads of these sperm appear to be nearly severed from their tails. This sperm has been attacked by bacteria. And this one may have been produced too rapidly. It will never complete its development. White blood corpuscles, the large round cells, are often found together with defective sperm. Their presence indicates the likelihood of infection, fever, or even a common cold. Most of these sperm deformities could have been caused by just a slight elevation in the tet drive is intimately linked with attraction and desire. Affection and romantic love may initiate the dance of courtship which may lead to conception. Sexuality, affection, and tenderness can all be part of the complex rituals of mating. signal partner's readiness to each other. The eyes are part of that silent language. Visual impressions stimulate and excite special nerve cells in the sexual areas throughout the body. It is amazingly sensitive and responsive to the touch. contains millions of these sensory receptors, which when stimulated, direct messages of sexual arousal to the brain. Many of these are concentrated in the body's most responsive areas, the erogenous zones. One of these, the man's penis, 
is densely packed with sensory receptors, here seen at enormous magnification. They relay messages of sexual stimulation to the brain, which triggers the complex sequence of events leading up to ejaculation. The length of the penis is made up of many small cavities called erectile tissue. When a man is sexually aroused, the signals from the brain cause these erectile tissues to become engorged with blood. As we can see in these images from the thermal camera, the sudden flow of blood to the penis raises its temperature. blood pressure, heartbeat, and respiration increase. And the blood causes the penis to become erect and elongated so that sperm can be most easily delivered to the woman's egg. In the epididymis, the hundreds of millions of waiting sperm, which will soon be expelled from the man's body, accumulate in the mass. As sexual arousal reaches its peak, the entire male sexual system must function perfectly for ejaculation to take place. Cowper's gland, prostate, seminal vesicles, and epididymis. is the actual journey made by the sperm. At the climax of sexual arousal, the man's nervous system triggers rapid involuntary contractions of the muscles in the walls of the epididymis. These propel the sperm up into the man's body along this tunnel-like tube, the vas deferens. The sperm themselves travel the distance a little over 12 inches in only a few seconds. seminal vesicles release nourishing fructose, which blends with the sperm as they pass by. They mix with the prostate fluid. The blended semen approaches the urethra. Its total volume is actually about one half a teaspoon. This is the last leg of the journey. The semen containing the sperm is forced out through the penis by the man's muscle contractions. And at last, it is ejaculated into the woman's vagina. the woman's body, it immediately slows down and coagulates. Perhaps it becomes thicker to ensure that most of the sperm stay within the vagina. Or perhaps the coagulation is a kind of defense, for the environment in the vagina is extremely acid. The acidity protects the woman against bacteria.